Yes, yeah, so the, the second possible uh, scope rule is what's called dynamic scope. And uh, remember this difference between the two terms, static and dynam dynamic. Static is something that uh, happens before execution, usually at compile time. And dynamic is something that happens uh, uh, at execution time. So dynamic scope was introduced uh, in some languages, uh, for example, uh, Lisp, early versions of Lisp, Snowball and Perl. Uh, and uh, mainly to simplify runtime environment management. This is uh, something that we will uh, talk about later in the course when we're talking about memory management at runtime. Um, and uh, we can we see that there is some overhead uh, um, uh, associated with uh, uh, keeping track of uh, static scope at uh, runtime. Um, meaning that we need to be able at the runtime to correctly find the correct declaration or the, the correct instance of a variable. For example, when we are inside the function phi and we're referring to x, which is declared non-locally, it's not declared locally, then how can we find the correct memory lo location for x at runtime? Because it's not declared inside the function, but, it, but it's declared somewhere else. And that's something that we will talk about later. To simplify this, a dynamic scope was, uh, uh, was introduced. And um, what does that mean? What does dynamic scope mean? Here we say that the valid association for a name x at any point p of a program is the most recent, in the temporal sense, is the most recent association created for x, which is still active when the control flow arrives at p. So it's the most recent association which is still active. So if we go back to our, our first program in this uh, discussion, we had inside block b, Block, uh, block B uh, declared the local variable X and then called phi and inside the phi the question was uh, what to which X is this statement referring to X is equal to 1. Well in a dynamic scope it's the most recent activation uh, sorry most recent uh, association. The most recent association is the one that happened inside block B because block B actually called block phi so once uh, block B declared X, it introduced an association between the, uh, between the, the name X and a memory location. And then if we're using dynamic scope, the X, the reference to X here is the one inside, is the one is to the X that it is declared locally in B. So that's what is meant by uh, the most recent association created for X, which is still active when control flow arrives at P. P, in our case, in this example, is the function phi. So, let's uh, take another example here. We have um, um, three blocks. We have the outermost block that contains two other blocks. The first one is a function declaration. Uh, no, sorry, it, it, both of them are actually function declarations, phi and foo. And the main program in, in the outermost block, it just calls foo. It calls the function foo. Um, what does foo do? Foo declares its uh, 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 lo local variable x equal to 1 and then calls phi. What does phi do? It writes out the x. And now, since we're in a dynamic scope, we're using dynamic scope rules, the x that we're referring to inside phi is the most recent asso association for x. We don't look at the program text as we do for static scope. In that case, the x that we're referring to inside phi is the x that is declared in the uh, outermost block. But in, instead, we're, we're 
look at the association that is most recent. And what is the association that is most recent? Well, it's the declaration inside foo, because foo is the one that called phi. So the x inside phi is actually uh, the write statement that writes out x inside phi is indeed the writing out the value of of x that is declared in foo. So in that case, we will get uh, the value 1 printed out. If we were in static, static scope, we would have printed out the value 0 because the, the, va the variable x has the value 0 in, in the outermost block. So here you can see the difference between static and dynamic scope. And another example here which is actually quite similar. Again, we have two functions that are declared uh, inside the outermost block. Uh, they have the name phi and foo as before. And now foo has another block uh, declared. So it starts declaring x equal to 1. Then the innermost block uh, starts. And that one also declares uh, a name x, which basically then hides the previous name x. And here x has the value 2. But inside this inner block, nothing else happens, meaning we just declare a, a local variable inside the block, and then we exit the block. So once we exit the block, the var variable x is not live anymore. It's, it has gone out of scope. So when we call phi, the const x equal to 2 is not uh, alive and we call phi which as previously writes out the value for variable x and then the question is what value is it? Well it's the most recent association that is still alive the most recent association which is still active that's an important part which is still active or still alive and then we write out uh, uh, 1. We, again, we write out the value 1. We don't write out the value 2 because that x that, ha that had the value 2 is not active anymore. So what are the advantages for the d dynamic scope rules? Well, it's flexibility. We, we, are, we are actually quite flexible uh, in, the, in the way that... Uh, we uh, write our programs uh, because it now it uh, depends on the exact order of execution uh, but it can also uh, so it, it we we, st we have some kind of a, a different mechanism to to uh, to control what our program do which we do not have when we have static scope uh, consider, for example, what happens if we're using dynamic scope and we rename a variable. Imagine here inside the, the function foo, if we rename this const x equal to 1 to const y equal to 1. Um, if we do that and then call phi, and phi writes out x, then what gets printed then? Well, in a dynamic scope, what matters is the most recent association that is still active. Well, why the, the, the x equal to 2 is not active because the block has gone out of scope. And we had renamed the variable from the sentence const x equal to 1 to const y equal to 1. So that one does not apply. So inside phi, we are writing out then the x that is declared uh, in the outermost block, because that one is still active. Why is it still active? Because we called foo, which then calls phi, so the block for the, outerm the outermost block is still executing. So here you can see that just by renaming a variable, we are changing the re renaming a local variable. Notice. Rename, renaming a local variable, we're changing the behavior of the program in 
in uh, uh, that is dependent on on, on a, a function that has actually nothing to do with uh, with uh, the renaming that we did. That's interesting. So there is there's a, there is a, a, a flexibility that we get by using dynamic scope. However, there are disadvantages, and uh, the first one that is mentioned here is that programs can actually be difficult to read because it's not sufficient for us to look at the program code, the 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 structure of the text as we do in static scope. Um, so it's not sufficient for us to look at the, the static text of the program to understand or to figure out what is going what the program actually uh, returns or what is the output of the program we have to really simulate its runtime behavior uh, and there is actually lower runtime efficiency compared to dynamic uh, uh, sorry compared to a static scope it should say here it is more costly in some sense to use dynamic scope than uh, uh, static scope and this is something that we will we will discuss uh, later but notice that in this discussion that the when we when we are, are considering static versus dynamic scope the difference between the two is only in the determination of the environment which is currently not local and not global. So for the local and the global environment, the two rules coincide. The behavior of the two rules is exactly the same for something that is uh, local and for something that is global. So why is that? Why? Well. Notice that the difference is only in something that is non-local. Uh, for example, here, the, when we write inside phi, when we write out the value x, if x was declared locally in phi, then there will be no question which x it is. It must be the one that is declared locally. Uh, but there are two possibilities if we are referring to something that is non-local. It is the, the the two possibilities is that is it declared in the outer outer block? In that case, we're using static scope, or is it an association that depends on the most active function that is the, the, depends on the function that is still running, so the most recent activation. So if we go back to our original program, when we write out this x here as the last statement in, in uh, uh, block A, uh, this x is actually a local x. It is an x that is declared locally. So dynamic scope and static scope would give the same result. This is uh, the difference is only in the determin determination of a, of a uh, uh, of a variable um, that is non a non local variable like inside the function phi something that is non local. <coughs> 